live from the Sugarland Ice and Sports Center in Sugarland, Texas. LSM Sports presents the ISHL Game of the Week. It's week 21, and tonight it's a South Division matchup between League Best Seven Lakes and the fourth place team and defending Justice Cup champions, Ridge Point. And now welcome up to our booth, everybody, alongside David Feliciano. I'm Michael Silvers. It's the third meeting of the season between two of the hottest teams in the ISHL entering this week 21. The Spartans have been winners of their last 12 games, including a 5-0 victory over the Panthers back in December, while the Panthers enter tonight's game, having won their last five games. Seven Lakes, a team we've done many seasons now, but kind of middle of the pack last few years have put together a solid veteran team, a lot of seniors in the, on this team, and it's paid off 14-1-2, top of the pack, best team in the league. The Spartans come in tonight off a 6-1 victory over South Texas with senior Daniel Dufresne notching a hat trick and an assist in the game. He leads the league's best team in scoring with 29 goals and 35 points. You gotta have a go-to guy. Dufresne's having one of those seasons, and best player among the top five players in the league, almost 30 goals, has a little help from Zach Campbell, very top heavy team, but he's always good for a couple of points a game. Meanwhile, the Panthers got a big 6-1 win over Taylor last time out on February 10th, and their leading scorer, Will Blake, picked up a hat trick as well and had a five point night. That's right, he got that fifth goal late in the game, and what a performance, a, a game we did, and uh, the Blake brothers, Drew Blake, Blake, and they're only a freshman, having a really good freshman season, so also a couple of good stars in Ridge Point, and both these teams, their go-to guys, solid all around. Coming up next, we'll have the scratches, the starting lineups, our goal standing matchup, and more as we prepare you for face-off of this matchup between the Seven Lakes Spartans and the Ridge Point Panthers. Live from the Sugarland Ice and Sports Center, this is the ISHL Game of the Week on LSN Sports. Drew Doherty here, and the Texans debit card is for the ultimate Texans fans. Get your free Texans debit card when you open a Texans checking account at First Community Credit Union. Choose from three customized Texans debit cards, plus you'll have the chance to win exclusive access to Texans games, autographed merchandise, and more. Get yours today by visiting TexansChecking.com and become a member. First Community Credit Union is the official credit union of the Houston Texans. Certain criteria apply. FCCU is backed by NCUA. See rep for details. North Shore Marine has been servicing its customers for over 40 years, stocking one of the nation's largest parts and accessory supply, coupled with the convenience of same-day shipping, allows most voting needs to be fulfilled with one call. North Shore Marine can supply all needs from service to sales for Evan Root, Johnson, Suzuki, Yamaha, Sea Arc, Go Devil, and parts and accessories for all your boating needs. Visit their showroom and see for yourself why North Shore Marine is one of Texas's finest Southwest dealers. Visit them on the web at NorthShoreMarine.com. <laughs> in Sports Center. Warm-up just about done. Let's run down the scratches for tonight's game. For head coach Paul Connolly in the first place, Seven Lakes Spartans. Scratch from your lineup, Sean Heffernan. He's inactive. Aiden Lynch is still nursing an injury. Riley Boyd is out. And Brooke Deneen has the flu. For Ridge Point under head coach Eric Gould, scratch Matthew Cuppick, Will Axel, Zach Lloyd. The starting goaltenders. For the first place, Seven Lakes Spartans, it's the top-rated goaltender in the league, Kalen McDonald, a junior, who possesses a .89 goals against average. He'll tossle with Grayson Jarab, also a junior, who is fifth in the league with a 1.80 goals against average. Our best goaltender matchup of the broadcast season so far, and uh, that's going to be one of the keys to the game that we'll talk about in just a second. Who's in the net? Running down the starting lineups are brought to you by North Shore Marine. For the Spartans, Daniel Dufresne will center Cameron Heiser and Ethan Kamen. On the blue line, Cameron Saunders and Elmeri Calpio. For Ridge Point, they'll counter with Will Blake at center. Joseph Burgess on the wing along with Drew Blake. On defense, Nolan McKinnon and Brandon Anderson. Time now for Dave's keys to the game, brought to you by First Community Credit Union. Think first. Both very talented teams. Well, these teams combine for about eight, nine goals a game on offense, so the goaltending will be the key. And McDonald, a great goalie. Jerob, a great goalie. 
someone's going to have to have a big game because I, I think we're going to have a lot of scoring tonight. One of these goalies holds the other team to about three goals. They'll be the victor. These two met to open up the season, played to a 4-4 draw back on October 7th, and then on December 14th, right before the winter break, Seven Lake shut out Ridge Point 5 to nothing. Referee is Kent Asplund, working the lines, George LaHockey and Andrew McCray. Ridge Point in black, they'll skate from left to right. Seven Lakes in white, they'll skate from right to left here in the first period. Puck is dropped, we are underway. Seven Lakes chop the puck towards the Ridge Point blue line. Anderson recalls in his own end. Daniel Dufresne pokes at it in the corner for Seven Lakes. He is their leading scorer and third amongst scorers in the ISHL. He is 11-4-15 in his last five games. McKinnon turns the puck over, high slot, but then it is forced back out to center as Drew Blake has his pocket picked by the captain of the Spartans, Dufresne, on his forehand. He shoots it, scores over the left shoulder of Grayson Jarob, and at 31 seconds, Seven Lakes scores. Well, that was all Dufresne. As Mike said, making the steal at center ice and then took it in around three players. He's just big and a very good stick handler. A wrister from about 35 feet out on the left side. one nothing, Seven Lakes. Dufresne has now scored at least one goal in his last 10 games. He was last held off the score sheet back on November 16th in a 3-1 victory over Cy Woods. Smith barrels in and takes a Panther with him. Motten. Panthers will poke it back towards the Spartan blue line. Hodge can't clear the zone. Kept alive by Matt Boivert. And now Seven Lakes are able to work it out. Ahead to the blue line, but then turned over. Defensively, Taylor came back to play it back out to center. At right defense, a minute gone. Seven Lakes pitches it back in. They lead it 1-0. Zach Taylor behind his netminder. Grayson Jarrett spins it to the corner. He kicked towards the blue line. Hoffman takes control, loses possession. Seven Lakes get it back. Here's Christian Beloy. Now Zach Taylor. He'll skate in across the blue line from his right to his left. Has Boybert streaking towards goal. And a soft shot is gloved by McDonald. Well, it took a minute and 20 seconds for Rich Point to get in scoring range. Good defensive play by Seven Lakes, and now we have a line change. A minute 20 gone by first period. one nothing and on a goal at 31 seconds by Daniel Dufresne. He led the Spartans with a hat trick against South Texas. Zach Campbell had a two-point night for the last time out. Centering pass was poked to the corner. Great defensive work by Drew Blake on the back check. Heiser battling behind the wall. Finds Kamen. He takes the tumble. Dufresne wheels it back to the half boards. Played back to Zhang. And that was Jack Zhang. Took a shot from the point. And the puck into the glove of Jarob. Even the second line for Seven Lakes. Good offensive pressure. Uh, really just solid first two lines for the Spartans. Going back to that first game on October 7th. Opening night, a back and forth affair between the Spartans and Panthers. Here's a shot for the point that hit the side of the net. Daniel Dufresne scored twice for Seven Lakes. Matt Boyvert and Zach Taylor each potting two goals for the Panthers. Zach Campbell, here's a shot that came from Will Blake. Went wide. Zach Campbell actually picked up 14 minutes in penalties, including a 10-minute misconduct in the game. Drew Blake has him in his own zone. Forces it out to center. And it is Will Blake. Will Blake, 16-5 and 21 in his last five. 10th in the league in scoring with 21 goals, seven helpers, 28 points. Back to the neutral zone, Drew Blake controls. With two and a half gone by first period, a 1-0 Spartan lead. It's a one-on-two battle. Will Blake comes in to help. Dufresne, Drew Blake also there with Heiser, Seven Lakes, as they continue to scrum to a side before it is brought back into the offensive zone by Ridge Point. Drew Blake in the right wing circle, a backhander, and that one could not get on goal. Came back to Drew Blake, and it's cleared out by Dufresne on his forehand. Middle of the pond, poked away by Will Blake. He is stood up by Calpio, and the puck dumped back in to the Ridge Point zone. Here's Brandon Anderson, number 14. For Ridge Point, he is a 5'8", 170-pound junior. Smith at the red line for Seven Lakes. Taken away by Hoffman. He shoots in. And dropping on it, sealing it. And it got to the top of the crease was Kalen McDonald. 
Last Four. time out, excuse me, Dave, McDonald 16 of 18 in goal against Memorial West back on January 25th, a 4-2 Seven Lakes win. The forechecking by Seven Lakes is very good. Back on their heels is Ridge Point when they have the puck on defense. Boyrick lost the draw. Played in the defensive corner by the Spartans. Wheeling with it there is Rick Zhang, a sophomore, to Beloy near boards. Plays it off the boards, out to center ice to Connor Smith, a senior at 5'9", 160. Skates in across the offensive zone. Put the puck through Zach Taylor's legs, but a little too strong, lost possession. Here's a centering pass to the side of the net, and no shot off the stick of the Spartans at point blank range. That was Beloy closest to it, but Jerob never had to make a move on the shot attempt that never came. Taylor backhands it out of the zone for Ridge Point. They skate left to right. Boyvert traveling along the right wing, charges into the zone. Has some help, and on the backhand, he shot it wide as he elected not to pass it to the streaking Joseph Burgess. Seven Lakes comes back right to left, back into the Ridge Point zone with 8.40 remaining first period. 1-0 Seven Lakes on a goal by Daniel Dufresne at 31 seconds. Shot it right over the left shoulder of Grayson Jarrett. Dufresne takes the puck away, collides with two Panthers, and the puck is loose in the neutral zone. Spun back in, and at left defense, it is McKinnon. Touched in the neutral zone by Will Blake, but then shot back into the Panthers zone by the Spartans with 8.15 to go. Comes the lumbering Connor Bailey. Spins behind his own net, and the Panthers have trouble clearing the zone. Taylor finally backhands it all the way down. They're going to wave icing off as John John Wright heads that way and stops behind Kayla McDonald. Up the near boards for Kamen. Nice little flip. And here comes Dufresne, skating from right to left, gains the offensive zone, tried to skate it through traffic, and here come the Panthers. Will Blake, in across the line, no, had it poked away. Good defense by the Spartans. And that was really the difference maker when you talked to both head coaches of the second game in which the Spartans won 5-0, was that the Spartan defense was more structurally sound than the first meeting back on October 7th. Puck comes all the way down to McDonald, and he will paddle it to one of his teammates. And that is Jack Jean. At right defense with 7.20 to go. Still in the Spartan defensive zone. It is banked out the center ice. Motten lost it, skating in Connor Smith. Got by Lloyd on the backhand. Shot is wide, not on target. Slapped to the near boards, but not out of the zone. Beloy on the four check, shouldered by Will Blake. Drew Blake. Has trouble clearing the zone, can't get it done. Stopped at the point by Calpio. Gloved down at the half boards by Smith. Here comes Campbell, skating along the icy line. That's a short side shot, and it hit the side of the net. Zach Lloyd, check it. He is scratched. That was Chad Lloyd. Daly out the center, may have hit something off the yeah, ice. Yeah, I'm thinking. Thinking it's gonna be a, a stanchion or something. The, Face off in the Panthers zone with 6.37 remaining here in the first period. Unofficially only three shots overall, but a bunch off, just off the net. I mean, we're, we're still getting a lot of action and uh, just missing both teams. Go back to that game on December 14th. Brooke Deneen, who is out with the flu tonight, scored twice with Dufresne, Campbell, and John John Wright each adding a goal. Kalen McDonald was a perfect 16 for 16 in goal for the Spartans over two months ago. Two on two battle behind Jerob's net. Puck dug free by Dufresne. Dufresne will play it back to the point. Calpio blast, redirected wide, and all the way back to the right point, where it is spun all the way back around into the corner. Mott will be there first for the Panthers. Tries to shield the puck away. Numbers game catches up to him. Calpio's shot is blocked from the point. It careens back out to center for the dump back in by Saunders. Pitched up the near boards, kept alive at the point by Calpio. Wines, fires, blocked by Boyvert. And Sidney Brooks got it back out to the neutral zone before the Spartans shoot it right back in. Up the right wing, Hoffman skates from left to right, loses the handle, and once again, it is dumped back into the Panthers zone by Seven Lakes. Matt Pipe comes barreling in on the board check. Puck avoids him as Boyvert then turned it over to Dufresne. Dufresne canceled out by Motten. Puck behind the icy line, swept up the near boards and poured it out to Sydney Brooks from Hoffman, and she loses possession. It's Delicia. Shoots it back in, but is immediately sent right back out by Ridge Point with 5-10 to play first period. 
Hoffman couldn't get the handle on it as the puck comes into the Spartan zone. Dufresne will play it, shuttle it, and it is intercepted. Lifted all the way back off the backhand of Will Blake. Hits the top of the glass and comes back down behind McDonald. Seven Lakes loses it. Got it back. That was Rick Jong. Played across ice before it is sent back out to center. Bodies fall down in the form of Drew Blake. Now Burgess at left wing. Spins it over the blue line. Shuttle back to the near boards. Drew Blake will skate in. Blake taken off the play by Rick Jong. Jong will recoil back behind his own net. Feed it to the far boards where Johansson is there to play it for Seven Lakes. Couldn't clear the zone. Will Blake does a great job keeping it in. Spun back up to Johansson, but once again, couldn't get it out of the zone as Burgess kept it alive, and then finally, Seven Lakes clear. 4.15 to play here in the first period. Spartans holding on to a 1-0 lead. Brandon Anderson, shipped by Burgess. It goes all the way down. Will icing be called? Yes. Stopping the clock with 4.02 remaining in the first period, 1-0 Spartans. That was a busy five minutes. Uh, just a fast-paced game. You can see the skill level of these teams is very high. And good pressure. Seven Lakes is, is keeping it in the attacking zone and trying to get it out as Ridgepoint having a tough time. Really, the Blakes have, have really the only been the, the only bright spot so far for Ridgepoint. Will Blake, Drew Blake, and Zach Taylor have really paced the Ridgepoint offense since the loss to Seven Lakes back on December 14th. Zach Taylor will skate behind his own net in possession of the puck. Up the boards to Drew Blake. Will Blake has scored in each game with two five-goal games against both PFC and Cy Woods. Zach Taylor has scored a goal in every game and has six goals in his last five for Ridge Point. Brandon Anderson has it behind his own net, skates to the far boards, plays it off the boards as Daly Couldn't get it into the offensive zone. Came in on the pick. Here comes uh, Will Blake. Backhands it past Daly. Here's Kamen center ice for Seven Lakes. Get back out to the neutral zone. Dufresne shovels it back in. Mutton swings it up the near boards. Stopped at the half wall by Dufresne. Lifts it back into the corner as Kamen and McKinnon come together. Kicked along the boards, but turned over. Dufresne with a centering pass, went through the net now. Deep below the icing line. No battle for it there. Swept up the near boards by the Panthers. And here they come, skating from left to right. Boyver spins it in. That's icing. Oh, he, he almost had something. Sent yeah. it in on the uh, defensive side of the red line. Barely icing. Now Ridge Point's still trying to, ha to make a break, and... On the other side of things, Rich Point really is attacking to frame. Every, every time he has the puck, Boisford's the one who's doing most of the damage. I mean, they're hitting him pretty hard. Face off to the right of Grayson Jerob, who stopped four of shots on four. Stopped them all against Fair Creek in a game in which Jerob and the uh, Panthers only conceded four shots on goal. Ooh. Back on January 27th, a big hit along the near board. Bailey nailing Beloy. <laughs> and once again, the Panthers have iced it, and I do believe we have a penalty, maybe yeah. retaliation on the part of Christian Beloy. Calpio's, he's kind of the tough guy for Seven Lakes, and it's going to be on Calpio. Is it? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's doing some big time hitting out there. Interference on Calpio. It, it was retaliation. He got hit, and then he came back. Calpio had served 12 penalty uh, minutes prior to tonight's game. First chance for Rich Point on the power play. This is a Mr. Electric power play. Mr. Electric, we have the power to make things better. Rich Point have scored five goals on the man advantage. Seven Lakes still searching for their first shorthanded goal this season. And a chance for the Panthers to tie things up after allowing a goal 31 seconds in. Seven Lakes get control of the puck in their own end and spin it all the way down. Panthers regroup. McKinnon along the near boards finds Hoffman. Hoffman turned it over at the red line. Beloy recalls it back to left defense. There it is. Sent down and cleared. So they'll try again. 
45 seconds killed by the Spartans already. Ahead for Hoffman, hard off his stick. And here's Rick Jean. Pivoting in his own zone, clears it down. That's a bad power play for the Panthers so far. A lot of the Spartans' success due to the abundance of Houston Wild travel hockey players. You'll notice the red helmets, Dave, that they wear. You know, they got about seven to nine players who play travel hockey. Yep, the Wild logo on there. Indeed. And that puck Jesus. flipped and almost hit my partner, Dave, right in the chest. I still got those reflexes, man. Oh, good. The that's last thing we need is a medic. In, in all the years we've been up here, that's the first time it's gotten this close. So the faceoff at center ice with exactly one minute to go. A, yeah, they got to get something going on this power play. Just ineffective. 43 seconds remaining on the Calpio penalty. Hoybert gains the zone. Far boards. Watched by John John Wright. Pivots. Sends back to Will Blake, and he oh, he stops the clearing attempt by Dufresne. Walking in, Boyford, a high shot off the short side, and it goes high and wide. Taylor throws one, and that is blockered away from the point by McDonald. 37 seconds to go. Center point, Blake. Taylor, right circle, swings and misses, tries again, goes off a stick, high, almost hits the ceiling. The clearing attempt is stopped by Lloyd, and then Seven Lakes. Still can't clear the zone. Boybert with five seconds to go on the power play. 19 for the period. Zach Taylor shoots. That one off the chest of McDonald and into his glove. Power play is over. 15.7 seconds remaining in the first period. Seven Lakes still holds a 1-0 lead. Well, they got two shots off on that power play. Shots are three apiece, but there's a lot more activity than that sounds like. Will Blake. Take the face off. He scored a hat trick against Taylor. Zach Taylor spotting in two goals, and Matt Boybert scoring a goal as well last time out. They had a 6 1 victory. Eight seconds to go. Puck in the Spartan zone. It goes high up over the glass and into the screen. That goal came, what, a 20 second mark or something? 31 seconds. 31 yeah. seconds. It's been kind of quiet since then. Seven Lakes haven't lost since the Memorial West game in which they were defeated 1-0 back on November 4th. The first period has come to an end. The score, the Seven Lakes Spartans 1, the Ridgepoint Panthers nothing. From LSN Sports, this is the ISHL Game of the Week. We've got the power to make things right. Mr. Electric, show you the light. Looking for electrical help you can count on? Switch to Mr. Electric. We have some of the best trained electricians in the business, and they're ready to help you with any project, big or small. Best of all, with Mr. Electric, our work is 100% guaranteed. That's why so many people trust Mr. Electric. We've got the power to make things better. Mr. Electric. Our pride is strong. Our roots are deep. Our pledge to help Houston businesses thrive is never ending. So it's no surprise Allegiance Bank is Houston's largest community bank. In fact, community is what Allegiance is all about. We believe investing back into our city, providing extraordinary personalized service, exceptional products, and even no-cost online banking and refunded ATM fees help keep Houston's economy humming. We are Houston's bank. We are Allegiance Bank. Member FDIC, equal opportunity lender. <laughs> Back to the Sugarland Ice and Sports Center, one nothing Seven Lakes after one. Last weekend in Dallas, the ISHL Varsity Select Team participated in their second tournament of the season at the Top Shelf Tournament at the 18U High School Division. The team was 2-1 and one in the round robin play to earn the number two seed in the finals where they beat the McKinney team to win the tournament. Incidentally, McKinney was the team that handed them their only loss during the weekend. The team won their first two games, 7 to nothing against Mansfield and Frisco. Playing in that game with three members of the ISHL varsity select team that are playing tonight, Zach Taylor, Brandon Anderson, and Chad Lloyd. Chad was not able to make the tournament, but Taylor and Anderson both tallied a goal during round robin play, and Anderson added to his goal count in the final score in one, and of course they play for Ridge Point. So congratulations, the trophy will be proudly displayed in the aerodrome up at the Willowbrook area, and a tournament puck was presented to T.C. Lewis for his constant support 
of the team and ice hockey in Houston. That's a great win because there's a ton of talent up in Dallas. I mean, much more uh, teams and activities. So good job by Houston. McDonald to our left, Jareb to our right. One nothing Spartans, an early goal 31 seconds in. Uh, the young man who just won the faceoff, Daniel Dufresne. Right to fence, Saunders. Seven Lakes one for one on the PK. Dufresne skates in, right wing side. Chopped at by Motten, and he got the puck away, but it's still in control of the Spartans before a deflection finds the stick of Bailey. And we have a whistle and a penalty behind the play. High, stick. high sticking. Is that Galicia from Spain? Isn't that? Uh... Could be. I mean, you would know. No, we had a, I remember there was a transfer student from Spain playing in the league a few years ago. I think that was Coletta from Coletta. PFC. Oh. Uh, penalties on Galicia for the high stick. Well, another Mr. Electric power play forthcoming for Ridge Point. Basically did nothing with the man advantage back in the first period. See how organized they are here. Well, there's a quick turnover, and Campbell will clear it all the way down. one nothing. Seven Lakes. Hoffman. In his own end, left wing boards. Pivots to get by one. That was Connor Smith. Finds Boyver, chops it down across the blue line. Spins it back to Anderson. Shouldered by Campbell. Kept alive by Will Blake. Between the circles. Shoots! Buckered away by McDonald. Good save by Kalen McDonald. In the corner, Boyver. Lost it to Campbell, and he slaps it down. 40 seconds off the power play. And the Panthers will recoil. Here they come, right to left with speed. Headman pass, hit off the skate of Will Blake, then turned over, is a shorthanded chance. Starting to get a shot off, and then they do off the centering pass. Campbell pots home, a shorthanded goal, two nothing Spartans. That's a big turnaround. And if you can get a shorthanded goal, it's like a pick six, and it was a two-man game down there. Campbell just stuck with the play. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, he's got the assist on that one. It was making, made the steal and stuck with it. I think it was House. So big play by House over to Campbell. Two nothing Spartans as they register their first shorthanded goal of the season. Will Blake circling in the neutral zone, attacking into the offensive zone, left wing side. Dufresne takes it away from him, and Heiser will clear it all the way down. 50 seconds of power play time remaining for Eric Gould and his Ridge Point Panthers. Not been able to get much offensive zone time with the man advantage. They did get one shot on goal, and it was a blocker save made by McDonald. Heiser again finds the puck in the corner and swings it all the way down. 30 seconds remaining on the Panther power play. Two minutes gone by here in the second period. Two nothing on two early goals. One in the first, one in the second by Dufresne and Campbell with Campbell scoring on the shorthand. Dufresne clears it all the way down from his blue line. And that will probably do it. Maybe time for one more rush from right to left. Taylor, Ooh. big check in front of the Spartan bench. Beloy leveled him. Drew Blake with a drop pass to Will Blake. Heiser clears the zone. Power play is over. And back to full strength, the Spartans with a shorthanded goal to their credit. And across the blue line, Taylor with a shot off the crossbar. Will Blake takes it into the corner. Has Will Blake there with Drew Blake to help. Swung all the way around. Can't be kept alive at the right point by Taylor. And he will just chip it across the red line for the turnover, carrying it back in, Seven Lakes. Wheeling with it, and a shot that hit the post. Daniel Dufresne almost had goal number two. Cleared out to the neutral zone by the Panthers. Will Blake chasing after it right wing side. It's a three on two. Blake with a centering pass, trouble with handling it was Drew Blake. And he is stood into the boards by Jack Jong. Here's Will Blake, top of the left wing circle. Spins it back for a shot by Taylor. Redirected and swept away before it could get to McDonald. Pass to left wing circle. Will Blake poked from him by Dufresne. Great back check by the offensive forwards and the centerman for Seven Lakes. Puck 
Pitchfork high, gloved down by John John Wright. Skated out left to right, finds Heiser, who gains the zone. Heiser, number nine, tries to feather one through down to the low slot, but Panthers were ready for it. And they send it to the near boards, but not out. With 9.05 remaining in the second period, 2 nothing Spartans as the Panthers with Boyvert. And he is hit hard by Connor Smith. And the puck comes to Drew Blake, who gains the line. Canceled out by Jack John. Ahead for Campbell. Campbell passes behind Smith. Johansson couldn't get to the loose puck. Play to the far boards. Hoffman sends it in to the Spartan zone. Sidney Brooks on for a shift here in the second period in the offensive zone. They battle in the corner, and John couldn't clear it. Campbell behind his own goal line. Stud into the board by Boybert. Brooks there to help. Puck worked away from her. The Spartans can't clear it. Nope, they do. It hops over the stick of Hoffman. He spins it back in. 8.25 to play second period. 2-0 Spartans. Here's Wright on the forecheck. Brooks played up the near board. Smith turned it over in the neutral zone. Brooks lost a one-on-one -on -one battle to Johansson. Smith shoots in, barrels in to the left wing corner. Watched there defensively by Lloyd. Spun back to the point. Saunders has it. He wrist one, looking for a redirect. That one was blocked in front and kicked out to the center point. Now Calpio, left wing circle, swings, misses. He was hassled from behind on a shot by Hoffman. Pitched all the way back down into the Spartan zone. 7.45 to go as Saunders back deep in his own end to play to Calpio up the far boards. Swept away from him by Will Blake. Will Blake takes a punishing hit by Calpio into the glass. Calpio back to get it again as he stood up by Will Blake. A little retaliatory shot given to him by Calpio as Brooks loses a one-on-one -on -one battle and ahead to Beloy who feeds the neutral zone but then turned it over to Chad Lloyd. On his backhand, he has his pocket picked and it's intercepted by Smith. Poked from Smith by the Panthers and the puck goes out of play. Well, Calpio's got to be careful. I mean, he's... Every time he's getting nudged, he's going after the guy. I mean, he's close to a second penalty. He's the, the attitude of Seven Lakes, no doubt. They're going to take him out for this shift, but a violent shift that time. Almost six minutes gone, 5.45 gone here in the second period. 2 nothing Seven Lakes. Face-off win by the Panthers as Will Blake won it just out of his own zone. Bailey. Puck will stay in the Panther zone. Campbell skates between two Panthers. Has a chance. Down low. Smith is there. Now came and he shoots and scores. Stayed with it. Campbell got taken out of the play. Then the puck got loose right in front of the goal. And, and pouncing on it is Seven Lakes. And that's, that's a big time goal right there. They got a shorthanded one for number two. And traditional style for number three. Three nothing. Fourth goal of the season for the sophomore, Ethan Kamen, whose older brother, Noah, went through the Seven Lakes system. Since that 4-4 tie back on October 7th, Seven Lakes have now outscored Ridge Point 8 to nothing. 6.50 to play, right defense, it's House. Up the near boards, out the center. It got through Anderson, ahead for Campbell. Cross ice feed, came and shoots. Jera makes a save at point blank range. And then he is collided into by Campbell and it knocks Jerob's helmet off. Well, I don't think I've seen that. That Campbell, I, I don't think Campbell, that's all his fault. He got hit, pushed into him. And unfortunately for Jerob, he got the worst of it. it this is a probably the hardest hitting game we've seen all season, Mike. 6.38 to play, period number two. Let's see. Three nothing, seven lakes. Let's see if they call a penalty there. I don't see anything. They're just going to kind of clean up the mess. Seven lakes have been out shooting their opposition coming into this game 184 to 50. They held Klein to just seven shots on goal back on February 8th. And then back on February 1st, they limited Fair Creek to just two shots on goal. Ridge Point have been out shooting their opponents 178 to 77 over their last five victories. They held Fair Creek to just four shots on goal when they played Fair Creek back on January 27th. Eric Gould talking with referee Kent Asplum. Yeah, Asplum's, he's talking to the Ridge Point bench. Head coach Eric Gould wanted to have a conversation with our referee. Here's a shot from the point. Bouncing puck wide of the net. Dufresne. Locked into a battle with Burgess. 
And out comes the Panthers skating from right to left. Ahead for Bailey, we charge into the offensive zone. Jack John is there on his backhand, skates behind his net, middle of the ice. He will shoot it back out to center. Ladle back to right defense, ahead for Bailey for the Panthers. Played near side on the boards for Burgess. <laughs> Hit in two by John John Wright with a check into the boards. Wright gets the puck, pivots behind his own goal line. Up to Glacia, slipping and falling on the ice was Burgess. In the neutral zone, Dufresne skates from his right to his left, loses possession of the puck. Here's Bailey, and he will shuttle it in. On goal, paddled away by McDonald. 5.45 to play here in the second period. A 3-0 Spartan lead. Two goals here in the second. One shorthanded goal by Campbell. Another Ethan uh, even strength tally by Ethan Kamen. Brooks along the goal line. Her pass was deflected high up in the air. She'll get it back in the corner. Watched by the poke checking Dufresne. Brooks still plays the puck behind the net. And she is taken off the play by Jack Jean. Seven Lakes skating from left to right here in this second period. Will barrel into the neutral zone, make it the uh, offensive zone. Here's Dufresne with a short side shot, stopped by Jerob. Sydney Brooks outlets to Drew Blake. Blake will skate in across the red line. He backhands it and turns it over. I'm not sure what he was trying to do on that pass. And Dufresne absorbs the shot from Boy Boyvert, but Boyvert goes down. It's Dufresne. He shook him off like a rag doll. 4.50 to go. Teeing up a shot that is blocked. It bounces into the right wing circle. Kept alive at the point by Saunders. Sent it into the right wing uh, uh, half boards. There's a big and play on the board. It's Galicia, I think. Well, uh, this, no. this is a hard hitting game, Mike. This is crazy. We might have our first penalty on Bridge Point. Oh, okay. Uh, on the other side. Boyvert gets the box for interference. I mean, this is big time violent. A lot of collisions and hits on the board. And, whew, the, I mean, these teams are going at it tonight. And you can see it in the stats. Only seven shots for Seven Lakes and six for Rich Point. Boyvert has spent six minutes in the penalty box this season. Seven Lakes on a Mr. Electric power play. Mr. Electric, we have the power to make things better. They have nine power play goals. Saunders tees up a shot. It was blocked in front. The rebound was sent wide by Heiser. And behind the goal, pivoting Smith. Watched by McKinnon. Smith carries back. Sends back to Zhang. Left wing side make that house. House with a backhander that slides along the ice. Easily paddled away by Jerem. Here's a short side shot by a Spartan along the left wing side. That was Campbell. And Jerem makes the save. Campbell gets it back in the corner. Centering pass, swing and a miss by Smith. And the puck comes out to center for 45 seconds removed from the start of the power play. House under pressure. Lost the puck. Back to help Heiser. Back to Saunders. Carried across the red line by Campbell. Oh, yeah, all sorts man. of trouble controlling the puck. We have a delayed penalty. And it's going to be on Bridge Point. Oh, what so is going to be a five on three here for Seven Lakes. I mean, Hoffman, that's, well, that's about the most obvious trip I've ever seen. I mean, he just, he got banged around and he just stuck his, his stick out right at the blue line. It was pretty obvious. Hoffman's going to go and Campbell's going to get a misconduct. Yeah, Hoffman's got to be smarter than that. Tripping is called on Hoffman. A chippy second period, I must say. Uh, this is a big opportunity for the Spartans. And a misconduct. So still be a five on three. Campbell's time won't be registered. Nope, there is. There they are. It's going to be two minutes for misconduct. Not a game, not a 10 minute. Thought for a minute it might have been a 10 because they only put, they didn't have him put his uh, penalty time up on the scoreboard. Bailey's going to go back into the box now. You got two Panthers in the box. Maybe Bailey. I'm not sure exactly what's happening in terms of Boyvert and Hoffman's penalties because Bailey's in the box. 
But we do know Campbell is in for two minutes for misconduct. There's five skaters on the ice. And now a fourth comes on for the Panthers. So still a five on four power play hmm. for 56 seconds. Seven Lakes leading three nothing. Three and a half to play here in the second. Dufresne, far boards, spins one towards goal. Got it back in the corner behind the goal line. Lifts it for Beloy. Beloy behind the goal. Swings it back at the point at Zhang. Jack Zhang down into the corner for Beloy. Taken off the play there by Mott. Mott greens it off the boards. And it's shut back down and cleared by the Panthers. 30 seconds to go on the Boyvert penalty. John John right back to collect it for the Spartans. Stops behind his own net. Spartans attacking from left to right here in this second period. They lead it 3 0. Head up the left wing boards. Powering in across the blue line. Beloy takes Botten down. Puck comes down to Heiser. Heiser skates below the goal line, swings it to the near boards behind goal. John John right with a centering pass. Sticked away by Jareb. It falls to Dufresne at the half wing boards. His centering pass was intercepted by McKinnon, and it's cleared down by the Panthers. So one penalty is killed, and now it's four on four for 57 for seconds. Or actually, five on five, really, for the next 50 uh, next 50 seconds. Boyvert out of the box. Heiser will skate and lose control. Had it poke checked from him in his own zone. Right spins it all the way down, and this will be deflected. So no icing. Mott will be the first one to get into it behind his own net. Looks for McKinnon. 35 seconds to go on the coincidental minors. Campbell is in for misconduct and in for tripping is Hoffman. Dufresne, his shot was blocked. Fourth back out to the neutral zone by the Panthers. Less than two minutes to go in the second period. 3-0 Spartans. Dufresne across the red line. Skates in across the Panther blue line. Hassle from behind by Will Blake. A centering pass off the backhand. Comes all the way back for a shot by Calpio. Slides off the side of his stick. Shot from the short side it is stopped by Jarrah. Dufresne on the shot. And four seconds to go on the coincidental penalties. After all that, three people in the penalty box, only one shot on goal and all that power play. And this period has, has been a long period, a lot of whistles. 138 to go, second period. Came in a goal scorer, loses the faceoff. Penalty time is over, but with it five on five, those players will stay, into the, stay in the box until the next whistle. Chad Lloyd off the boards, turned it over. In the corner, Kamen. Burgess turned it over. Smith on the forehand. His shot was blocked. Deflects, bounces towards goal. Around behind the net. To the point, was blast there by Calpio. Well wide with 1.05 to go. Here's Saunders, right point. Shuttles it in deep. Going into the corner, try to dig it out. Reed Condra comes out, deflects off the half boards. Here's a shot, bounces past the goaltender, Grayson Jarrett. Spun in deep around the boards. And a low shot by Condra, he scores! Right in front, nobody took him on. And an easy goal as Condra beats Jarrett to make it 4 nothing Spartans. The Condra's a big guy. He just set himself right in front of the goal. And Normally, you just got to get somebody to knock him out of there, and nobody did, as Mike said, and that's easy. Uh, Condra slam dunking that one in, and that could be the capper. And a great period for Seven Lakes, three goals. Third goal of the season in game number 15 for the senior, Reed Condra. Comes at 12-11 of the second period. House at right defense. Rick Jean has trouble with the Blake brothers. Spun into the Spartan zone. Will Blake from the half wall on his backhand. Centers on one, and that one could not be, could not find Burgess. Anderson down to Burgess. 28 seconds to go. Stymied by Campbell in the corner. A two on two battle with two Panthers and two Spartans. Burgess working hard along with Campbell. Puck is dug free by House. House skates behind his net, lays it up the far boards to Beloy. Beloy locates Rick Jean. Jean skates from left to right, middle of the ice. Now wheels with the puck. 
takes it inside the Panther zone before it is carried out off the turnover by Will Blake. House takes it from him before a shot could be released as the second period comes to an end. Four nothing, Seven Lakes. This is the ISHL Game of the Week on LSN Sports. North Shore Marine has been servicing its customers for over 40 years. Stocking one of the nation's largest parts and accessory supply, coupled with the convenience of same-day shipping, allows most boating needs to be fulfilled with one call. North Shore Marine can supply all needs from service to sales for Evan Root, Johnson, Suzuki, Yamaha, Sea Arc, Go Devil, and parts and accessories for all your boating needs. Visit their showroom and see for yourself why North Shore Marine is one of Texas's finest Southwest dealers. Visit them on the web at NorthShoreMarine.com. Drew Doherty here, and the Texans debit card is for the ultimate Texans fans. Get your free Texans debit card when you open a Texans checking account at First Community Credit Union. Choose from three customized Texans debit cards, plus you'll have the chance to win exclusive access to Texans games, autographed merchandise, and more. Get yours today by visiting TexansChecking.com and become a member. First Community Credit Union is the official credit union of the Houston Texans. Certain criteria apply. FCCU is backed by NCUA. See rep for details. <laughs> Four nothing after two, Seven Lakes on top of Ridge Point. Seven Lakes dominating that period, out shooting Seven Lakes seven to two, three goals to zero. Overall, 10 shots to six, Seven Lakes, and they lead on the scoreboard four nothing. And well, I, I hope that third period is not as chippy as that second, but Seven Lakes really taking control. Uh, great skill on offense and a hard hitting defensive team as well. I mean, this, this team is for real. Coming up next Friday here on the ISHL Game of the Week, we'll have another South Division matchup as the Seven Lakes Spartans play host to the Taylor Mustangs. Coverage gets underway at approximately 645 right here on LSN Sports. McDonald to our right, pitching a shutout so far through two periods. Jerob to our left, he's allowed four. Dufresne and Will Blake for the faceoff. It is won by Will Blake. Goes back into the Panthers zone. Collected at right defense by Motten. Kept alive is the turnover by Daniel Dufresne. Back for Galacia. And then deflected out the center. Drew Blake pokes at it. Pokes at it. Back into the Spartan zone where Jack Jong will backhand it clear. Galacia at the red line. Into the zone. Motten backhands it. Here's Will Blake, captain of the Panthers. Skating from left to right. Charging in across the blue line. Cross ice pass out of the reach of Bailey. Bailey gets it in the corner, looking to play it back, but loses the handle. And it careens out to center ice, where the Panthers are back in possession, 40 seconds into the third period. That one behind the red line shot in. Icing is called on Ridge Point. Dufresne, Campbell, Kamen, and Condra. The four different goal scorers for Paul Connolly's team so far tonight. And that's kind of how their season goes. Just they, they have ten, or excuse me, six people with ten or more goals, ten or more points, I should say. So a deep team. A lot of people can put it on net, and they always follow the shots, which is good. Face off to the right of Grayson Jerub. Campbell will take it. Gets Boyvert. And Sidney Brooks couldn't clear the zone. Contra kept alive, and then it is forced out by the Panthers. Calpio at left defense. Monitored by Boyvert. Capio skates behind his net. Checked down by Boyvert. Sidney Brooks comes in, plays it behind the net. Burgess tries a centering pass, poking at it. Brooks, she goes down. The save is made by McDonald. Seven Lakes does a good job of protecting their goaltender. Uh, McDonald, anytime he gets in a, a tough situation, the defense comes in there and bails him out. The Ridge Point is just not able to get close to the goal. Minute seven gone here in the third period. Four nothing Spartans face off to the right of Kalen McDonald. Seven lakes control, but turn it over. Burgess at the half wall, plays a centering pass that goes actually behind the net. Sidney Brooks was there to play it. She loses it, and the Spartans try to clear. They battle along the half boards. Taylor from the point, shoots, easily stick. As the pads were down, came to the stick of McDonald, and he drops on it, gets the whistle. 11.36 to play in tonight's game. And watch for Seven Lakes to put a lot, or excuse me, Ridge Point to put a lot more on goal. They're down four nothing. They're just going to go all out and try to put something and get a, a loose puck and stick that one in. 
Face-off win by Seven Lakes. Rick Jong, the far boards. Kept alive momentarily by Burgess in the offensive zone before it is cleared by the Spartans. That left defended is McKinnon. His headman pass was deflected by Campbell. It's behind the net. Falling down the Spartan. Now Campbell, and we have a whistle. And a hand pass is called on the Spartans. Face-off will come out to center. Well, choppy start to the third period. A minute 45 gone. It's 4-0 Seven Lakes. Seven Lakes once got to the Justice Cup final back in 2012. Lost in a shootout to the Woodlands. The and Woodlands have won five Justice Cup championships as Kent Asplund is talking with the head coach of Ridgepoint, Eric Gould, again. Well, those two have been having conversations the entire game. Of course, the playoffs in about a month's time. It's going to be a single elimination tournament seeded by league finish, not by division. So the divisional playoffs are gone. Faceoff will come down after the icing to the Spartan zone. So you're going to be seeded by how you finish with an overall record, single elimination tournament, wild card games that first Friday on March 22nd. They'll whittle it down to the final four on Saturday up at the Willowbrook Aerodrome. The semifinals and final on Sunday, March 24th here at the Sugarland Ice and Sports Center. Games, obviously, to be determined, and the times of those games will be determined. Here's Dufresne from right to left. Carries it across the line, past Anderson, skates in, off the short side. He shoots, and Jarrett makes the save. Good stuff by Jarrett. Dufresne on a breakaway is not a good thing. And he got free. Wide open coming in on Jared's left and stuffed him. 2 11 gone by here in the third period. 4 0 Spartans. After the faceoff, out to center ice, pitch back in on the delayed offside. Mott, half boards, turned it over to Dufresne. Dufresne skates from his left to his right into the slot, and it's poked from him. Got it back, did the Spartans. Kamen, centering pass, looking for a redirect in front and the finish by Dufresne. Here's a shot that came from a sharp angle from the half board, sticked away by Jarrah. Kamen came wheeling in, but Will Blake got it away from him and then played it into the skates of the referee, Kent Asplund. Puck behind the net, swung up the boards, and the Panthers are out to center ice with Drew Blake in possession. Took it back into the Spartan zone where he lost control, and back come the Spartans from right to left, across the red line, Will Blake on the back check. Feeds it ahead for Drew Blake, who skates in across the line. Pivots, carves the ice, tried to get it past John Wright, but the Spartans clear the zone. Lifted back in by Blake, and it'll be played there at left defense. Here comes Jack Jong, skating middle of the pond, angles to his right, Cuts to his left, across the blue line, and then his single man effort, his individual effort, was stymied by Lloyd. Boyvert chips it out to center ice, and Bailey will carry across the red line and shoot it in on goal. And a pad save off the shot by Bailey from the neutral zone, made by McDonald. Spun back to the point for a blast, a redirect. McDonald steers it away. Boyvert behind the net, tries to lift it over the goal, in front of the top of the crease for Brooks, but Seven Lakes are right there. Here's Connor Smith. Cross ice, pass Jong out to center. Jong pokes at it, tries to find a teammate. It comes to Campbell. He doesn't realize the puck is at his feet. Zach Taylor will skate from left to right with less than nine minutes to go. Taylor on his backhand, spun it back. No shot from Brooks. And here comes Campbell ahead, right wing side to Lloyd. Took an elbow from Lloyd. Campbell able to work it back into the offensive zone before it is lifted out by the Panthers, and then Saunders slaps it in to the Ridge Point bench. You know what I really like is Zong. He, he's kind of a good X factor for Seven Lakes. Tough defender, and very offensive defender as well. Gets down here and makes plays. Uh, kind of gets lost in the shuffle with all these great players out here, but Zong, a solid, solid member of this team. 4-23, gone by here in the third period. 4-0 Spartans. Face off to the right of McDonald. Dufresne and Will Blake will take it. Will Blake wins it, Burgess. Back to McKinnon, slaps one from the point, it's blocked backhand from Will, uh, Drew Blake, never reached goal. Off the boards, Mott 
couldn't keep the zone. Comes back out to center ice. Matt Pipe. Pass doesn't connect with Dufresne. Will Blake will send it back to McKinnon at left defense. Out to the neutral zone. Pivoting with the puck back in his own end, Calpio. A lane on the back right defense to center for the chip into the Panther zone off the stick of Dufresne. And McKinnon has it at left defense. And he spins it all the way down. This will go for icing, stopping things with exactly five minutes gone here in the third period. The Spartans lead the Panthers four to nothing. And I think both teams are getting a little tired. This period not as smooth. Not as violent as the last period, but not as smooth either. Not a lot of offensive activity. And the score holding still at 4 nothing. Offensive zone draw for Seven Lakes. Campbell will take it against Will Blake. Will Blake wins it back to McKinnon. Up the far boards, out of the reach of Burgess. Saunders slaps one. That was redirected just wide in the slot by Pike. Out to center ice as the Panthers clear the zone. Drew Blake. Lifts it over the red line, back the other way. Now Lott at right defense, turned it over to Pipe, but battles to try to win it back for his club, he does. Drew Blake stood up by Calpio. Calpio's a big boy, six yeah. foot 182 for Seven Lakes. That's big for high school hockey. And he comes from Finland. The Finns are supposed to be nice. Entered the program over the summer as a move in for Paul Connolly. He has it left defense. Up the boards to pipe into the Panthers zone. Quickly cleared with 7-10 to go here in regulation. Calpio draws back into his own zone. Poked from him by Will Blake. Calpio plays it up the boards. Campbell with a shot on a Panther. He goes down and pipe carries across. Played it through the legs of Martin. Pipe with a centering pass that got deflected and eventually went behind the skating Johansson. Kept alive and then actually worked back to the neutral zone by the Spartans. Turned over to Pipe by Burgess. Pipe got by Burgess. Stopped and stymied in the right wing circle before it comes back out to Rick Zhang. He will gain the line. Zhang in the left wing. Skates along the goal line. Backhand. Jarrah makes the save. Here's also, Zhang again. And Rick Zhang got his own rebound. Played it back. House with a blast on the point. That's blocked. McKinnon lifts it up the far boards, but he can't clear. Dufresne. Locates Rick Jong, who skates into the right wing circle on the forehand. Got by McKinnon. Rick Jong with a great work to skate in and get a shot off. And Jerob is able to make the save before it is picked out the center. Off the stick of Brooke, she turns it over. And the Spartans will control. Six minutes left here in tonight's game as McKinnon plays it off the boards. And Brooks is able to gain the zone. On the left wing side, she is canceled out by Heiser. Heiser skates beside his own end, pushed by Brooks on the forecheck as Jack Jean sends it to the near boards. Spun behind the net, far boards. Boivert, half boards, now it's Brooks. Chance for Boivert, and he takes a shot, punched away by McDonald. Heiser up the near boards, chips it out for Dufresne. Two on two developing here. Dufresne skates to the high slot. Forehand wrist shot is blocked by Taylor. Wide of the goal. Taylor will carry to the corner. Plays up the boards. Not clear as Jack Jean sends it in deep. Kamen plays it back to the half boards for Heiser. Comes together with Sidney Brooks. Jack Jean keeps it alive at the point. Backhands to Dufresne. Dufresne loses it. Drew Blake backhands it and it rolls all the way down to the Spartan zone. With eight minutes gone by here in the third and final period, 4 nothing Spartans. Work back out to the neutral zone. Heiser uses the boards to his advantage, and he shuttles it in deep. Logging in on the four check is Kamen. Canceled out as the puck is flipped out of play by the Panthers, stopping the clock with 4.39 remaining. A 4 nothing Spartan lead here in the third period. And they're just going to play this one out and... Good period by Seven Lakes. They got a good lead, and they're holding Rich Point in check. That Rich Point a little bit more pressure, but not enough. And again, not on the scoreboard. And they have yet to break ten shots. They're at nine. After the faceoff win, John John right left point sends in deep, goes down low to Beloy. Beloy finds Connor Smith, stood up into the boards. Smith still battling. It's going to be a one-on-two battle. Anderson tries to dig the puck free. Looks to have some help from Will Blake, but Smith still battling for Seven Lakes. 
puck is worked free. Seven Lakes control. Zach Campbell, and he goes down as bodies collide. They both fall down as Will Blake takes it off the boards, carries in, has a two on one, tries the centering pass. Bailey couldn't get the shot off. And the Spartans turn it over in their own end. Less than four minutes to go. Will Blake tries to find Bailey, but his pass was caught in traffic, and the Spartans clear the zone. They skate from right to left. Beloy gains the line, hassled by Taylor. He recoils at the half board. Beloy tries a shot that is blocked. It careens to the left wing corner. He is shouldered by Taylor. Puck still controlled by Smith. Back to the left point, Calpio. Wrist shot gloved by Jarrow. 332 remaining. What year is Calpio? I mean, Calpio is a junior. Oh, wow. He, he's got a little more growing to do, too, physically. He's going to be a heck of a senior defender. I mean, him back there along with Zong, th this Seven Lakes team is tough to get by in, when you're attacking them. Since that 4 4 tie back on October 7th, Seven Lakes have outscored. Ridge point nine to nothing. Kept along the line by Saunders. Into the corner for Galicia. Stood in two by McKinnon. McKinnon working the puck along with Pike. Galicia looking for a pass in front to Dufresne. Flipped it over the goal. Onto the stick of Drew Blake. He clears the zone. Intercepted by Galicia. Back comes Dufresne. Scored the first goal of tonight's game. 31 seconds in to the first period. Calpio. Little it back for Saunders to flip ahead along the right wing boards to Galicia. Galicia monitored by McKinnon. Galicia behind the net. Galicia turns, finds Pipe, has trouble handling it on his forehand. Pipe uses the boards, spins it down into the corner where it is shuttled back to the point. Calpio keeps it alive. Got it back, and then it is kicked out by Blake. Now he's got Boyvert with him as Drew Blake centers. It goes to Boyvert, couldn't get a shot off as it was caught between the skates. Again, the defensive work by Seven Lakes has been outstanding tonight. Not only the defensemen, but the Fords committing to the back check. Absolutely. Dufresne has it the half boards. Turned over, Drew Blake skates it out left to right, locates Burgess. Burgess back to Blake, across the blue line. Looking to get it back to Burgess. The pass goes behind Joseph, and they'll battle along the half boards. Burgess has two Spartans on him. Spartans come away with the puck, and they send it back out to center. Worked there by Pipe. Left at the blue line by Dufresne. On his back handle, skated in across the blue line with less than two minutes to go. 1.50 to play. Kept alive by Rip Jean. Johansson sends it into the corner where McKinnon will play it at left defense for the Panthers. 1.45 to go, four nothing Spartans. Dufresne is hurt, he skates to the bench. Yeah, he got something on his uh, shoulder or something. Off the far boards, House intercepts on a shot and will skate it to his left, use the boards to bank it out to center. Slap back in by Will Blake, less than 90 seconds to go in regulation, four nothing, seven lakes. Kamen trying to work it up the left wing boards. Has trouble as the Panthers stymie him at the uh, half wall. Here's having trouble with the puck with Brandon Anderson. Johansson, deep, centering pass. Condra couldn't get a shot off, and it's Will Blake pivoting back behind his own net with less than a minute to go. 57 seconds remaining, a 4-0 Spartan lead. Now the Panthers just going to try to avoid the shutout here. They've been shut out now if this holds twice in the last two meetings against Seven Lakes as the Spartans are looking for win number 15 of the season. And in doing so, they will end the five-game winning streak of which the Panthers enter tonight's game with. 30 seconds remaining. The puck is in the Spartan zone. Then out to center. Condra with a rink-wide pass locates Johansson. Johansson leaves it. And the offensive half of the ice, Sidney Brooks backhands it across the red line, turned it over to Saunders, who turned it over to Blake, who then got it back. And it goes back into the Panthers zone for Brandon Anderson to play in the final 10 seconds. Here's Smith charging in. Delayed offside. They're going to just cancel that out, say no delayed offside. Final seconds tick off, and that does it. Final score, the Seven Lakes Spartans four, the Ridge Point Panthers nothing. Four different goal scorers for Paul Connolly's Spartans as Dufresne, Campbell, Kamen, and Condra all tally as 
In doing so, the winning streak for the Spartans extends to 13. The five-game winning streak for the, uh, for the Panthers ends tonight, and they will go back to the drawing board for their next game against Klein on Sunday. I think I figured out why the Seven Lakes goaltenders have such low averages. Their defense is incredible. The goaltenders, boy, I'd love to play behind these guys, Zahn and Calpio. These guys, what players? And Zahn, a great offensive defender, as I said before. If you got great goal scorers on the front and good defense behind you, there's, it's obvious why this team is in first place. Seven Lakes win their 13th in a row, their 15th of the season. They'll look to extend to a 14-game winning streak on Sunday when they take on Pearland Friendswood here at the Sugarland Ice and Sports Center at 645. Coming up, our post-game coverage, so don't go anywhere. 4-0 Spartans is your final. This is the ISHL Game of the Week on LSN Sports. Bone Star Electric Supply is a service-oriented, Texas-based, full-line electrical distributor specializing in lighting and control design, project management, and logistical excellence. Bone Star is owned and operated by experienced leaders with a proven track record in the industry with locations in the major hubs of Houston, Dallas, and Fort Worth. We're poised to serve electrical contractors throughout the state. Call our local office at 832-855-3400 or find us on online at LoneStarElectricSupply.com. At Lone Star Electric Supply, we make it happen. When it comes to Houston's growth and success, Allegiance Bank means business. Just one more reason we are Houston's bank. As a small to mid-sized business owner, you need a bank dedicated to helping you with acquisition financing, expanding your operations, lines of credit, treasury services, and above all, exceeding your goals for success. From fast answers to extraordinary service, at Allegiance, we pledge to do all we can to help Houston businesses thrive. Allegiance Bank, we practice what we pledge. Member FDIC, equal opportunity lender. So why do teenagers play high school sports? My reason why is a sense of purpose. My reason why is to inspire others. One reason student athletes seldom mention is to get an athletic scholarship. They know that only 2% of all high school athletes are awarded a sports scholarship. So why do they play? My reason why is friendship. Tell us your reason using the hashtag my reason why. This message presented by the NFHS and the high schools in your community. Tonight, the ISHL game of the week, which saw the Seven Lakes Spartans shut out the Ridge Point Panthers by a final score of four to nothing. Michael Silvers and David Feliciano back with you. Four different goal scorers for the Spartans. Let's run down the scoring summary. 31 seconds of the first period, Daniel Dufresne scored an even strength marker to make it one nothing Seven Lakes. And then in the second period, three goals, the final three goals of the game. A shorthanded goal at 118 scored by Zach Campbell. At 3 0 at 701, Ethan Kamen scored an even strength marker. And then it was Reed Condra at even strength at 12 11 to seal the deal and give the Spartans a 4 0 win. And that's usually what Seven Lakes does. Dufresne will get one, and then they'll get a little bit of help everywhere. And that second period was a key. It was a hard hitting period, a lot of penalties, but Seven Lakes took advantage of the. Of the a tough play and got three tallies in that period to put this one out of reach. Don't forget coming up next week, it's a ISHL game of the week, South Division matchup as the same Seven Lakes Spartans play host to the Taylor Mustangs. Our coverage gets underway at approximately 645 right here on LSN Sports. And one of the themes that we talked about throughout the game was just how committed the Seven Lakes Spartans forwards are at back checking. No wonder, as you mentioned towards the end of the uh, broadcast, uh, the end of the game, just how good the goals against average is of both Kalen McDonald and his backup, Trey Zanuda. Yeah, it's easy to cherry pick when you're, when you're in offense. You hang around the, the blue line of, your, of the opposing team. You wait for that pass. But these guys get back, and it just makes it easier. you got four people back on defense, and, and that's an all-around game. That's good coaching. The ISHL Game of the Week is a production of LSN Sports. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or any other use of this broadcast without the express written consent of LSN Sports is strictly prohibited. Your final thoughts, Dave? Well, really, that's my first uh, glance, our first glance at Seven Lakes, a really impressive uh, senior-laden team, 
solid on both ends of the ice. Got to be the favorite down the road. Well, that's going to do it here from the Sugarland Ice and Sports Center. We hope you enjoyed it. A 4-0 victory for the Seven Lakes Spartans as they win their 13th in a row and they end the five-game winning streak of the Ridge Point Panthers. So until we talk to you next Friday here at 645 for the same Seven Lakes Spartans as they match up against the Taylor Mustangs, this is Michael Silver speaking on behalf of my broadcast partner, David Feliciano, saying so long from the Sugarland Ice and Sports Center. This has been the ISHL Game of the Week on LSN Sports.